Welcome to the 38th Annual Juried Student Art Exhibition. My name is Molly Hull and I am the Gallery Director at Meredith College. Meredith has two gallery spaces. The first is the Frankie G. Weems Gallery, located within the Gaddy Hamrick Art Center, and the second is the Johnson Hall Rotunda, where this exhibition is held. It remains open until September 23rd, so you have plenty of time to see this artwork in person. Although the events for this exhibition remain virtual, it remains open to the public during normal operating hours, which you can find on our website, www.meredith.edu, as well as the current COVID-19 guidelines. This year's juror is Tamar Harris-Warren, who is the Development and Operations Manager at Cam Raleigh and the Audio Description Coordinator at Arts Access. Tamar also happens to be a Meredith alumna. So thank you, Tamar, for jurying this year's annual art, juried art exhibition. This exhibition is special for so many reasons. The first is that it allows for our students to be professionally juried in a show during their college career, which sets them apart from others in the job world. The second is that it allows us, the viewer, to see the talents of our students. I remember as a gallery intern during my Meredith College experience, I was blown away by my peers because I had never really taken studio classes. Now, as a gallery director, I have the honor to hang the artwork not only by my interns, but also by students who I would not have met otherwise. This exhibition includes 35 works of art by 20 students. And these students are not necessarily minors or majors within the art department, but have still taken classes with us. Media in, that you will see includes photography, prints, paintings, graphic design, sculpture, ceramics, and fiber. This exhibition also includes braille as well as reading materials for those who are low vision. For information about accessibility as well as accommodations, please feel free to email me at hullmary at meredith.edu. This exhibition spans two floors and the second floor is accessed by an elevator which you can find to the right of the main entrance. I hope you enjoy this virtual tour. The first work on our tour is Caitlin Barlow's She Persists, which is a screen print on fabric in the shape of a mask hung on two gold chains against a stark white background. Printed on the masks are the names such as Rosa Park, Maya Angelou, Coretta Scott King, and so many other names of admirable women. Barlow takes the concept of hiding behind a mask, but juxtaposes it with the names of strong, outspoken women to declare how we are consistently fighting for our basic human rights. Women today fight for equal opportunity, pay, justice, and recognition. I find it interesting how Caitlin translates this powerful message onto a mask, an accessory that we now wear every day. This feminist message, therefore, is not avoidable and it continues to persist. Moving from Caitlin Barlow's She Persists, we continue to Bailey Burchett's Tension, which is a linoleum reduction print created from a wood block. You can feel the tension that's coming off of the brain as the lightning strikes it and the various colors that are resulted from the using the wooden block. Beside the bust of Jordan Corandillo's head in the trees is Isabel Ruse's self-portrait, which is a ceramic bust. You can't help but be drawn to her. Just look at her coloring. You start at the base with the greens, the blues, and the purples, and then you ascend upwards with the reds and the oranges, whites, and blacks. Finally, you come to her face, which is patterned, and then you're drawn into her face with her eye-catching colors, as well as the enthusiastic eyes and smile. There are two themes that are prevalent with this bust. The first is that it relates to Dia de los Muertos and the home country of her father. And the second is that Isabel is embracing herself as an artist. Moving from the ceramic bust of Isabel, we go to the mixed media collage by Safa 
Salahadin. This is Safa Salahadin's Kandaka, which is a mixed media collage formed from both watercolor and cutout photographs. Safa's collage draws on the idea of belonging, which involves finding one's own inspiration and identity. The word Kandaka refers to the ancient Sudanese queens who are set against a letter written in Arabic in the background. Safa is inspired by these female figures who were strong, revered women who ruled her home country in Sudan. Their inclusion within the collage showcases these powerful women in Sudanese history. Everyone has a place in this world and should feel a sense of belonging. This collage beautifully showcases Safa's sense of belonging. This is Caitlin Barlow's second work in the exhibition called Stories Untitled, which is a fabric quilt square that comments on families being separated at the border. Both of Caitlin's works in this exhibition feature strong emotional connections that you cannot help but be drawn towards. This is Brooke Benton's Wine Still Life, which is acrylic painted on canvas. Now think about that title and let's look at the painting itself. We have a wine bottle in the center of the canvas with both a wine glass and grapes. But what makes this painting unique is the fact that it's illusionistic. So this frame, in fact, is an illusion and this is all on one surface or plane. What also is unique about this painting is the fact that it's painted monochromatically. So Brooke is using one shade or hue of blue, but varying it to make you see both, for example, the hues and the glares and the kind of um, effects that happen when light comes and hits the glass itself. Starting above the fountain, we have Suyajaya's Vinkat Tizan's slowing down the quickest moments. Looking at the photograph, you see a spoon with a water droplet frozen in time. Thinking about that more closely, Suyajaya wants you to realize that you should slow down the quickest moments. Now with the photograph, you have that ability. You can turn on the shutter, really focus in and get the shot. But in life, you don't have that ability. So you need to slow down and appreciate life while you can. Now focusing our attention on the fountain, we have Mackenzie Ulibati's From the Hands of the Creator. Looking at the fountain more closely, you start at the mouth where water is coming down onto a hand into the basin itself. Hands encircle the basin and then you look, think about the title, From the Hands of the Creator. And these hands are literally Mackenzie's, which add to not only the significance of the fountain, but also to the title itself. Behind me are the works of Leah Jensen and Caroline Haw. Beginning with Leah Jensen, we have the digital painting entitled Fenselier. Frigg is enthroned with natural elements surrounding her, and the presentation of Frigg lends itself to Leah Jensen's purpose, which is to really highlight women's roles in mythology. This painting was painted digitally, meaning that she used a digital paintbrush and painted from there. This technique was completely new to me previous to this exhibition, so thank you, Leah, for your artwork. On the opposite side is Caroline Haw's Indigo Eye Cat, which is the study of dyeing cotton fibers, specifically indigo dye. When you get closer to the artwork, you can begin to see the variations of the hues of blue, as well as the techniques that Caroline has woven into the weaving itself. This is Brooke Benton's print entitled Life and Death. Previously, we saw a reduction linoleum print, but this is specifically a dry point print, which means that Brooke took a slab, perhaps metal, and literally engraved her design into it and printed via that design. In the foreground, we can see baby birds that have been wrapped around a snake that's decaying, and the mother at the top is feeding her baby birds. This print kind of interestingly juxtaposes the ideas of both life and death.
This is Bailey Burchett's receipt, Balance Do Reform. This piece takes our traditional perception of a receipt and literally blows it out of proportion. No longer can the receipt be thrown away in a grocery bag, but instead you're held accountable for your lifestyle. Bailey presents an itemized list of what Americans spent on consumer goods in 2019. From coffee to restaurant meals and to TV services, the viewer is confronted with their own lifestyle habits. This receipt calls for social reform and the need for Americans to reassess their lifestyles and think more on a global scale in terms of the impact on the environment in which we live in. I will admit that I am guilty of these habits, but I realize that I need to reform. This is Kristen Morin's Floral Feelings. A piece of fabric is attached to the canvas and a atop of that fabric are screen prints of both a human figure and various bouquets of flowers that are intertwined with the color that matches the bouquet itself. Kristen's piece relates to mental illness and the various types of mental illness. With those types comes various reactions, and this piece encompasses that. We previously saw a digital painting by Leah Jensen downstairs. Now I'm standing in front of a series by the same artist, this time entitled Thetis of Nereid and the Death of Achilles. This series focuses on the perspective of the mother of Achilles in the Iliad and highlights her relationship to her son. She is aware of her son's famous death. While she is immortal, her son is mortal. This series highlights once again the roles of women in classical mythology, which are often overshadowed by the greats. You hear always about Achilles and Ajax, but never about Achilles' mother. And that's why I particularly love this series, because of its subject matter and how the story is presented throughout the series of six. Now we go to the end of the series and we're confronted by two of my favorite works. We have the death of Achilles himself and also his kind of burial. You have the dynamism from the death of Achilles followed by this sad, somber mood that's presented by his mother. I particularly love the last painting because it once again brings emphasis to Leah's point that she wants to celebrate the women in classical mythology, so we're not just thinking of the famous Achilles. This is Casey Vandenboom's Dissection, which is a mixed media collage. We previously saw one downstairs, but what makes this unique is the fact that it's on canvas. An intriguing element behind this artwork is that Casey originally started with the self-portrait and was not satisfied with the result. So she cut off the self-portrait and kind of manipulated and rearranged the pieces of it to find herself again. And it lends itself to the subject matter, which is ultimately finding her identity as she goes through young adulthood. This is Rachel Stewart's Blossom series, which is comprised of three planters, two vases, and a goblet. Each of these three vessels are intended to hold flowers which lends itself to the title, Blossom Series. This is Caroline Hall's Floral Memory, which is the second example of a linoleum reduction print that we've seen in this exhibition. Do you remember the times before the pandemic when we could travel? Well, this print draws us back to those times. When Caroline studied abroad in San Sepulcro, Italy, she found this flower at the University of Padua in their botanical gardens. Looking at this flower, you can kind of begin to see how the flower is set against these yellow stripes that kind of converge around the flower itself, almost like a sun lending itself to the brighter times ahead. Moving from the time before the pandemic, we now come to when the pandemic started. With Bailey Burchett's COVID-19 pandemic, 13 April 2020. When you begin to look at this series, it's almost familiar to you because this is what we experienced last year. We have the signs that say things are temporarily out of stock or that we need to stand six feet away. 
And at this time, what's ironic is that we thought this period was short-lived, but we are still in it today. And these signs have now become normal and something that we see every day, which lends itself to the kind of eeriness that's in the photographs themselves. This is Elizabeth Kempel's Stability, which is a print that was made from a design that was engraved to a plexiglass sheet. Looking at this print, you see a skeleton dominating the picture plane. The skeleton is being held up by various hands. Looking closely at the print, you begin to see how vines intertwine through the bones of the skeleton itself, as well as little creatures that come out and appear here and there, such as the salamander that comes out through the eye of the skeleton, or the snail that perches on the shoulder itself. Going back to the title, Stability, you think, okay, skeleton. That stabilizes you, it allows you to stand. But here we see a skeleton that's no longer in its bodily form, and instead other ways are stabilizing it. This is Hannah Schneider's 007 website redesign that was created via Illustrator. Here, Hannah is taking a physical website that she found, in this case in Sweden, and making the website both more legible and accessible. In this particular case, as you begin to look at the various five designs, you realize the subject matter. The, the museum that Hannah is creating this website for is dedicated to the thousands of related objects of the James Bond film itself. What I love about this website redesign is the fact that Hannah included a button in which you can click on it and go back to the 1960s when the James Bond films were originally popular. This is Casey Vandenboom's shadow work triptych. Triptych refers to the idea of three separate pieces that somehow blend together. Here we see both the shadow work theme along with this idea of duality, the kind of dark on the left, and on the right, we have light. And this idea is further translated into the imagery that we see before us. On the dark side, we have these thorns that protrude out of the woman, while on the right side, we have these roses that are blooming, suggesting that there is light available for these blossoms to, in fact, bloom. And in the middle, we have this kind of migration of the two, in which we have both thorns and roses. And together, these kind of two simultaneously blend when you witness this in person, because you get to see kind of the colorings against like the red and the purple, but then this blend with the white of the female itself. This is Ana Ramirez's Forbidden Fruits, which is acrylic on canvas. With this artwork, Anna is studying the composition itself. She's literally posting and rearranging photographs in order to create the design that we have before us. The title itself, Forbidden Fruit, you think about when you see the, the fruit at the top that's dribbling down onto the anadry below. This is Hannah Tabe's 21 Young and Free. Here, Hannah has captured the moment Ashley has walked into her room in van, laid down on the bed, and is basked in sunlight. The placement of this photograph within this exhibition is strategic. So Ashley physically receives the sunlight that comes in from the doors in Johnson Hall and is reflected on her face. Here we see Ashley truly 21, young, and free. This is Ana Ramirez's Rooted in Stardust, which is a series of three photo montages. And remember this work because we'll be seeing other examples following this work. Ana in this series takes natural elements such as sweet gumballs, leaves, and other found natural objects and juxtaposes them, rearranges them, and photographs them together to have the series that we have before us. This is Isabel Ruse's Low Key, which is an acrylic on canvas paper. Here, Isabel has inserted two symbols that reflect herself, a Pennywise character in the top corner and a succulent in the bottom corner. These two reflections of Isabel are painted monochromatically, which means that she's using various shades 
and hues of gray to bring in that three dimensionality that you see, for example, in the succulent. This is Anya Lee Coliazzo Lopez's I Know the End, which is a series of four separate mo photo montages that show an empty, lonely city. Looking at each of the photographs, you begin to see some types of familiarities that you have when you look at a building. You have signs, materials such as brick and paint, and you also have barbed wire and um, satellite dishes. But the more that you look at these photographs, the more eerie these buildings become because you're missing doorknobs, you're missing windows and doors, but also where are the people? So the more that you look at these photographs, the more that you're enticed to wonder these questions. And when you have no answers to these questions, that's when the loneliness and the emptiness sets in. I'm standing in front of two works, one by Jessica Bland and the other by Hannah Schneider. Jessica's work is entitled Good and Evil. She's taken a diptych and layered one on top of the other to lend itself to the title, Good and Evil. Good is portrayed through the light, while evil is portrayed through shadows. Hannah Schneider's roll dull book cover redesigns draw us back to the other website designs that she did previously. Here, Hannah has taken the classic books by Roll Dahl, Matilda, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, and she's redesigned the covers presenting the classical books in a new way. Walking off the elevator, you're immediately greeted by Rachel Stewart's monster mosaic. You can't help but be drawn to the mosaic from the eye in the center to the teeth that surround that eye. And then you realize, wait, there are more eyes. Eyes dot the entire tile and they're all various colors, which makes you want to see more. This is Dora Frommer's Nature's Course, which is a composite photograph. Here we have two images that relate to one another, so we call it a diptych. Looking at the images itself, we have the leaves with the illusions or the reflections of the trees that stand beside it. And here the tree has the leaves, which we previously talked about in the other image. Here Dora is relating to the changes in nature and the memories that come from those. And those memories apply to the future. This is Casey Vandenboom's Mind and Body, which is a mixed media painting on wooden panel. Looking at the painting itself, you're confronted by a human body, perhaps relating to the title of the artwork itself, Mind and Body, but also the own mind and body of the artist and how she wants you to perceive it. Switching from the subject to the materiality, we begin to kind of see why this piece is so convincing, so illuminating. Looking at the body itself, we have the sculpturality that Casey is able to capture with the various hues of blue that kind of make up the leg of the female, perhaps. Then we have the drips that fall down the top of the painting into the collage aspect of the piece itself. And then what makes this painting is the gold leaf that provides a little luminosity across the wooden panel itself. This is Anya Lee Coliazzo Lopez's bouquet series, which is a series of photo montages. Looking closely, you're thinking, what is this flower arrangement? And the closer you look, you realize that these are actual flowers and plants that happen to be Anya Lee's favorite. What I love about this series are the patterns and the colors that she extracts from her favorite flowers and amplifies them to the extreme. And she does this with the use of a kaleidoscope. You're looking instead at a series of photographs, but you're tricked to think that these are actual bouquets of flowers. This is Casey Vandenboom's The Anatomy of a Woman, which is a ceramic bust with collaged paper and painted elements. This bust encapsulates the complexities and the expectations that women constantly feel in society. And that idea that women always put others before themselves rather than looking and taking care of their physical wounds. 
Looking at the stark white bust and the painted elements, you begin to see how the bust is intertwined with this red vine that extends around her upper body, up towards her hair, and then around the head itself. Following that curve, you enter into the collage aspect of the sculpture, which are diary entries. Here, Casey is vulnerable and showing that this dark, this dark red contrast against the white plain allows for her to grow within society itself. We now come to the final work on our tour, Rachel Stewart's Caterpillar Weavings. Looking at the weavings themselves, you already know what the subject matter. You can see the materiality itself, but also the colors, the vibrant colors that reflect, reflect beautiful butterflies. Caterpillars turn into butterflies, and we can relate this to life itself. And the idea that we start out small, like caterpillars, but then we blossom into beautiful butterflies with our own individual, bright, vibrant colors. Thank you for joining our virtual tour. I hope you enjoyed it.